Over the course of 2021, we all buy photography gear, but there are certain ones that we all know that made a huge impact in our workflow and our portraits. Well, in this video, I'm gonna cover my top choices and let's go ahead and cover todo el pedo. First on the list has to be the 24 to 105 Canon RF lens. Now this lens came in the clutch for me in 2021 as I shifted my vision in 2021 going into the studio and really trying to find my style. The 24 to 105 really changed my thought process from always having to create bokeh shots to now forcing myself to shoot at, at four, 5.6. And it wasn't about creating bokeh anymore. In the studio, I started to learn, okay, get comfortable with shooting at f4, 5.6. And this lens with the versatility that you get from the 24 to 105 really, really made an impact. And this lens does not come off my camera. If I'm shooting in the studio, this is basically glued to my camera. I love this lens. Number one goes to the 24, 105. Love you, baby. Next on the list would have to be the Savage Beige background. Earlier in the year, I was telling myself, I'm gonna force myself to shoot more in the studio. So I went a little crazy. I bought four different colors from Savage, which was the fashion gray, the beige, the red, and a blue. And beige was the color. I wasn't really sure how it was gonna work, but from the first time I used it in the studio, I immediately knew that this color really made the subject jump from the background. And if you've seen my recent video, I got so many comments. What color is that background? What size was it? I received maybe over five comments specifically about this color. And if you're wondering which color outside of gray, because gray is probably the most versatile, but if you want a nice other color to complement gray, you can't go wrong with beige. Next on the list would have to be the Cam Ranger for tethering. And this one completely changed my workflow in the studio really made it a lot more convenient and easier. Now I know you might be thinking, well, Eli, you use Capture One. Why aren't you just tethering to your laptop? I have, I'm not really a big fan of bringing my laptop to the studio, but also I needed a workflow to also help out. And if you didn't know, I do a lot of portraits at work. I work as a teacher and I do all the pictures for all the sports teams. And so I'm working with middle school and high school students and I need them to be able to look at their pictures and then also to be able to rate them there on the fly. And the reason why I like the iPad, because the Cam Ranger works with the iPad, which is super awesome and convenient. It's very intuitive. The students were able to be able to swipe through their pictures, rate them. It was a much easier process for them. But I also use this with my models whenever I'm working in the studio. It's such an awesome you know, way for them to see how they're looking in front of the camera. And bringing along the iPad for me, is just a little bit easier for my workflow. And one of the things that I have not tried out yet is taking it on location, which is something I'm gonna do in the future, probably in 2022. At some point, I'm gonna take it with me on location. It's really convenient, uh, opposed to obviously bringing a laptop for on location portraits. Before we move on, I'm curious, what are your top choices? Leave a comment, now's the time to leave a comment. Give me maybe like your top choice for 2021 or your top three. And I'm curious to know which ones were your top choices for 2021. Coming in at number four is the 48 by 72 silver reflector by Westcott. Now this one has really came in the clutch. In my recent video, I talked about my favorite one light setup where I use it on the floor to add bounce light into the subject to fill in the shadows, which is, man, that's like my go-to setup right now. But what's also great about it is that it's white and silver. So I've also used it in the studio, almost like a V flat, just having my friend Marco hold it up. And if I need just like a quick fill, it's big enough to really bounce light and fill light on the subject. And what's great about it is that it folds up so it's nice and compact. Number five on the list, if we're talking about camera gear, come on, you gotta have a camera on the list. And the R5 was my camera of choice, really hit a home run for me. Now I know this camera got a lot of bad rap for video. I am real basic when it comes to video. I really just need a camera for portraits and this one is just, I mean, I can't say good enough stuff about the R5. The megapixels, the autofocus, by far my favorite mirrorless camera to date. I do have the Sony a7 IV coming in, hopefully in a month, but the R5, I mean, shooting in the studio, shooting on location, 
it just feels great in the hands and it just brought me back to my 5D Mark III days. And so R5 camera of choice for 2021. Next on the list is the Canon 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens. Now this lens is small and compact. It's a great lens to bring. Now I was basically forced to purchase this lens because as you guys know, the 35 millimeter focal length is my go-to choice for on location portraits. And at the time of recording this Canon, shame on you, they have not released a 1.2 version or 1.4. So this is the only choice I have really, or to adapt, but this lens really surprised me. Took some amazing pictures throughout 2021 using this lens on location, but also came in the clutch as well. When I did my summer workshop tour, I really needed to pack lightly, wanted to pack as uh, less gear as I could. And because of the size, really was helpful and I was able to take some awesome pictures at this workshop just using this simple affordable 35 millimeter lens. Coming in at numero siete is the outdoor wagon. Now I have to give credit to my friend Joe because he's the one that introduced me to the larger wagon. I'm sure you guys are used to the regular size one but there's a new one that extends out and what's great about this one is that you can fit your C stands in there, multiple camera bags. I mean, it really makes your life so much easier, especially for your on location shooters. And what's great about it is that it collapses down to a small convenient size, but yet can hold so much gear. Before we move on, I do wanna talk about today's video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative people on topics including photography, productivity, business, and more. Make great use of your downtime and check out Skillshare's online classes which include a combination of video lessons and class projects. The recent class that I just had a great time watching was film photography, shoot your first roll of 35 millimeter film by Kyle McDougall. What I enjoyed about this class is it was a nice refresher on how to shoot film but also how to load film. It's been a couple of years since I've used film but lately, one of my students has been interested in shooting film, so I bought him six rolls of film and it was a nice refresher, because I'll be honest, I forgot a lot of the basic stuff because it's been a couple of years, so this class really came in the clutch. Now is the perfect opportunity to start learning new skills on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. Coming in at number eight is the Kupo C-Stand, the 20 inch. Now this one, I, you know, one of my biggest frustrations with buying C-Stands is buying reliable C-Stands. Now I owned two previous brands and they just broke on me and I was already frustrated. I needed something that I could rely on that was great. And what's great, good about the Kupo, about this specific one, is that it actually is a little bit smaller, but it actually comes down a lot lower, which is great for my workflow. Because when I shoot outdoors, I do a lot of sitting poses or crouch down poses. And this allows me to bring it all the way down and to be able to get some of those shots, but at the same time, still raise it up high enough to still do full length shots. And I do have to thank my friends Marco and Matt Reyes for introducing me to this specific C-Stand. It seems like this is built tough and it's going to last. Coming in at number nine is the FJ200 insert. And what's great about this specific insert is that it attaches to my Westcott modifiers. And now I can directly attach this modifier to the FJ200 without having to bring multiple brackets and all I have to use is the tilter bracket. And that saves just a little bit more space in my camera bag. And if at any point during my photo shoots, I want a quick light setup, I immediately grab my FJ200 with this FJ200 insert with my beauty dish and the PhotoFlex Lightreach Plus. And now I have a quick mobile setup. Before you guys head out, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what were your favorite purchases of 2021. You guys have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys on the next one.